Have you ever wondered what you could do in the robotics industry? Like what specifically you'd be working on, where you could work, the type of job that you could have, the type of robots that you could be working on, the problems you could be solving? Well, guess what? I put together a seven minute training that will show you exactly the different opportunities that the robotics industry can afford you. You're gonna learn what types of robotics that you can work on, what we use robots for, how robots are actually everywhere and you may not even know know it. And you're also going to learn a little bit more about the work that I've done in my career as a robotics engineer. So I hope you find this content valuable. Let's go ahead and just roll the training. And so what I wanted to do is kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what you can do with these skills once you have them. A lot of you work on robots maybe as a hobby, but maybe some of you want to make that into your career. And so this is just a great segue from, you know, working on these types of mobile robots and then taking your career to that next level and deciding which path you want to go down. And so my specific industry is more industrial automation, manufacturing, controls, and automation. So I'm going to show you a quick little picture here. And essentially what we're going to be looking at here is the robot arms. So using robots to do material handling, using robots to spray parts, move parts, move materials, assemble components, and and create products. And so a typical role of a controls engineer is to make sure the equipment doesn't break. Because if it breaks, you're not making products. And if you're not making products, you don't sell products. And so the idea behind this is you're constantly thinking on the fly. You have to come up with very creative solutions. The programs aren't as sophisticated, but they're complex in a sense that you're working on these systems that have many different pieces. You're working with conveyors. You might be working with multiple robot arms. You might be working, you know, in a in a factory that relies on very specific technologies or requirements, depending on what you're making. And so you've got these programs that can get very long, very sophisticated, and one little bug can cause the whole thing to fail. The next picture I want to show you is the controller. So when you're working with, with industrial robots or inside of a factory, you're going to be working with industrial grade controllers, PLCs or PACs, um, and panels similar to this. And so this is just like the rugged equipment that you're going to be programming on. You'll probably be using some some form of ladder logic, some sort of you know industrial controls program. It's not going to be your your typical like C or C plus plus or Python. It's it's very high level, easy to read, easy to wire uh, programs. But it's designed to make it really quick to be able to go and troubleshoot. And it's also designed to be very reliable because, like I said, the goal is to keep these mach machines running for basically forever. And hopefully, you don't have any problems so that you can make problems products and your company can make money. The other side of that is, let me actually just show you this quick little picture. So when you're working in industrial controls, you're going to work on cells similar to this. A lot of times factories will divide up specific assemblies or functions or pretty much anything that you want to accomplish into cell. And so typically you'll have a automation or robotics engineer that oversees a cell and they know pretty much everything about that cell from like what this robot's supposed to do to like the ant the joint angles to like how to control the motors to how to do calibrations, what types of preventative maintenance or PM schedules, how to train operators on how to use it, HMI configurations, networking, pretty much everything about the cell that is assigned to an automation engineer would be their responsibility. And usually they're not the ones that design the cell. So it's their responsibility to work with whoever did design the cell, a third party integrator or whoever built it and you know configured the cell, figure out the documentation read it, make sure it's working. If it's not working, create modifications and make future improvements. And like I said, keep this machinery online. Another side of robotics is a little bit different. This is more of like your classic research related robotics where you've got like high tech equipment and it's moving around and you know, you're doing some navigation, you're doing al algorithms, you're creating, you know, very complex processing it's not necessarily reliable. You're not going to be getting the exact same results every single time. It's more experimental, but it's, a, it's an advanced um, side of robots. So industrial robots, it has to be rigid. It has to work. It has to be simplistic. It's not going to be like some you know novel program that you're writing. It's literally because you need to be able to make product consistently. It has, it has to be repeatable um, and it has to be reliable. Whereas when you're doing more of like the research side of robotics, it's all about becoming novel. It's all about creating the next 
next best piece of technology, better, you know, better technology, more reliable features, and advancing the field as a whole. And so this relies heavily on creating like and innovating new sensors, innovating new ways to program things, creating more software libraries. You know, this is where you know robot operating system comes into play, Python comes into play, and C comes into play. And so if you're really into like hardcore programming, this is the route you're going to want to go. And this is a little bit more hands-off building, hands-off assembly. It's it's not the down and dirty like you're going into this factory and you're climbing up and fixing wiring and, and you know, troubleshooting on the fly to get things working quickly. It's more or less a complex challenge in robotics with software and advance the field. So it's a very different perspective. And then this is just another picture showing you some of the other types of robots that you could work on in this field because they're very two different paths and it's hard to be good at both of them. So you want to pick something, one that you like, two that you think is cool. And so if you're, you're really interested in manufacturing, you're really interested in making your career, you know, working on industrial robots, it wouldn't really make sense for you to go and learn ROS, um, for instance. I'm here to help you with all of your, your career development questions related to robotics. So I'll see you guys. Happy Sunday. I hope you found that training super valuable. I know that a lot of people have asked me what they could do with robotics for their career, how they can get highly paid or highly compensated for their competencies. And so that training should have given you some different ideas of pathways that you could pursue. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering, how can I work with Liz in the robotics mentorship program? Good question. You can head on over to learnrobotics.org slash mentorship. Watch the training that I put together there. It's about a 12 minute training that's going to show you everything you need to know about the program that I run, the methodology that I use, the exact strategy that I use with my clients to help them get into the robotics industry in the next 90 days. And if you think it's a good fit for you, you can apply. We work together in this program. This isn't something that you're just going to like consume on the internet. We're going to be building out the exact plan that's going to help you go from your current role now into the robotics role of your dreams. So if that sounds good, go check out learnrobotics.org mentorship. And I look forward to meeting you soon. Peace.